Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Just got back from test riding the 97 GTX 800. As you can see, we got our nice stickers on. Just custom made myself. Got a new registration numbers and decals on. Got my GC Extreme stickers on there. HydroTurf custom BRP stickers made. This is the original sticker up here. We got our rollover sticker, another GC Extreme sticker. Got this don't mess with my Sea-Doo. Wish I could get one made up with the, you know, actually look like this, the three seater have the GTX there instead, but that works for now. Got a hydro turf and a BRP BRP logo. I didn't do any large sea dues on the bottom. Just gonna leave it plain. Kind of got a little dusty. I already wiped it down. We had to go down a dirt road at the um, to get to the lake that I went to. So I wiped it down pretty good with uh, water and spray bottle and paper towels. Um, so on our test ride, we found out we're getting some cavitation, which is pretty sure due to the wear ring being worn. When I inspected it, it was borderline. I'm like, hey, it's it might be good, might not. Well, yep, it's cavitating. So today we're going to remove the pump. And I probably won't get it done today, but we're going to um, cut the wear ring out, put a new wear ring in, and do the cone oil. Um, that'll all be in this video, but I won't get it all done tonight. So it'll be a, I'll have to stop and continue next time. So. I'll splice the videos together, but let's get this thing started. Set my tripod right there. Okay. Hopefully I grabbed all the right tools I need for this. I've never taken one of these off. Well, I guess I have on the 98 XPL or GTX with a 951. But it's got the 155 pump, which is different than this. This is a 140 with this weird reverse gate. It's a little different than the ones the uh, older GTIs have. There's no, I don't see a spring. We've got a mechanism here for the uh, rod. So we'll break that loose. Of course, that's going to be a 10 mil. Get that crack loose. Got the washer. Okay. So that cable is loose. And do we have a steering? Yep, there's the steering one. Same thing. We'll go ahead and get that loose. that bolt back in that one just so I don't get the two bolts mixed up sometimes the bolts for the nozzle and the reverse bucket and even the trim if it has trim are different links so we'll just leave that one there and it looks like now all we have left is this housing which connects to the nozzle that's a 13 mil, I believe. Yep. Pop that back. Okay. Yep. So that just goes right over the nozzle. You could probably put this back on and just keep the reverse off if you don't want the reverse. Okay. So 
So yeah, that just goes right over the nozzle. That's that's pretty ingenious. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, there's a nice big gap, a decent sized gap between the wear ring and the impeller. So now we have these two O-rings right here. You don't want to lose these. I normally replace them with new ones, which come in our kit for our kit from OSD Marine. We'll see what cone this is. Maybe that's already an anti-rattle cone, but I do have a I do keep an anti-rattle cone in all kits available for all my projects. So I always order them. Order another one every time I use one. So we have oil and everything for this. We have a wear ring. We have a Del Delrin wear ring from OSD as well. So now we want to take these off. I've got to get my 17. That's what I forgot. But before we take those off, before we take the pump off, we need to free up the carbon seal. So, and this thing is up high, which is a pain. <laughs> Should put it on my stand over there, lower it. So let's get our seats off. Okay, we're gonna throw this up in the front for now. I'm gonna take this bad boy off just to make it easier to work. And that's also 10 mils. set that down there we'll put that together just so we don't lose it in a minute so this is our carrier or our carbon seal earlier i was pushing against it this one you want to push it up to expose this o-ring now some up there's a there's a groove right in there that that o-ring sits in so you either have a o-ring or you have a c-clip Luckily, this one's got the O-ring, which is a little easier to remove than the C-clip. So, uh, let's see. We're going to grab our tools. I need a small screwdriver. Small flathead screwdriver. Okay, grab my tripod. This is up high. I don't know if I'm able to get any footage. Maybe I'll find something to put this on. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is get this O-ring. It's hard to do with holding the camera. But get that out of the groove just like that. You can see the groove. So now we're gonna got to get this. It's a little tight, but we'll take a hammer and we'll tack it. And we'll knock it loose and it'll free it. So I'm gonna grab a hammer. Okay, so I'm basically setting this just like this. I'm gonna tack it, hit it, tap it with a hammer, and we'll break that free.
they're not usually that tight okay so of course we'll take our uh, 5 sixteenths and take this off we're replacing this boot so we're going with a carrier bearing yeah now it's moving freely see so the o-ring or your c-clip sits in that groove right there since we're going with a carrier bearing it just slides in and out carrier bearing is just so much nicer you don't have to deal with this of course you want to make sure the pump is still on when you're doing this that way you have because you got to push this forward you got to push this hat forward in order to expose the o-ring and you and you can't do that with the pump loose because then you'll just the whole shaft will go with it you need the shaft to stay in place um and on that same note you can't when you go if you keep in the carrier bear or the carbon seal and you're swapping or you're replacing the car the carbon seal with another one of course you'll want to get the pump back on before you can set this and push it into place to get that o-ring or c-clip into position but we're going to swap this out with the carrier bearing, so no more worries with that. Okay, so that is loose. Next is to pull that pump. Let's grab our let's grab our 17 17 and we'll go grab another extension. Okay, grab our tripod. Okay, so trust me, it's a lot faster when you're not trying to record. Okay, so these have a shaft, and then I know these top two go through, and there's a nut on the other side. So, before I'm lucky, and they haven't just spin, so it's spinning on me. Try not to lose. We have our washers and our lock washers. Also, something with this, I noticed the uh, speedometer gauge wasn't working. We got our speedometer wheel here. It looks like it might have been froze. I just knocked it free. But the there's also one on the in the electrical, in the uh, digital one. I didn't see if that was working, but. I know the needle on the analog one was not moving. It might have been because that was just seized up. I just knocked that loose. So maybe it does work. Maybe that was just, it looked like it had a rock in it or something. Okay. So I'll always try pulling it out, see if we can get it by hand. Huh. Wow. I, it's a. Uh, didn't even need my two by four or my ratchet strap we've got there's no seal there so someone had this off before so let's see what we have here show you guys yeah see it's hard to tell but there is a there is a big gap I mean it's it's a little worn but looking at it from the with the nozzle on it didn't look like it was too bad the impeller is in good shape we've got normal wear and tear Nothing big on it, nothing major. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull our drive shaft out. Um, 
you gotta get that. Oh, that's right. We gotta take this off. We gotta take those clamps off. Okay, so I'm gonna get my thing. We'll take those clamps off. Okay, so we used I used my side cutters here. Take take these off. When it goes back on, we're just gonna be using we're just gonna be using zip ties. Ugh. There we go. Dry shaft is out. We'll cut off those weeds. Okay, oh, there's our O-ring, and where did that hat roll off to? It must have rolled under the engine, off to tip the ski up to get out. But now we'll take this off and get it ready for our carrier bearing. Okay, we got our 516s on there. We didn't have to loosen that one. Need the clamps anyway. Gotta get over that lip. So yep. That's this carbon seal. I keep the old ring, it looks good shaped. But I don't really re reuse them because I switched the carrier bearing. But it's good to have in case a customer needs one or something. So, pup is removed. <laughs> That's all it is to it. Not that hard, guys. So, um, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to put stuff away, go in and eat dinner, and we'll take that impeller off, cut the wearer ring out, get the new one in, and we'll be good to go. We'll do the cone, cone oil as well, so. I'll add to that, add to this video, so for now I'm heading out, I'm heading home. I'm heading in to eat, so. I'll add to this video and we'll put it all up as one video, so. A good place to do it in shot. Okay guys, we're trying something new here. Normally we take the cone off, drain the oil, and then take the impeller off so we can cut the wear ring out with a Dremel. One of the guys posted up to try this method. Basically, put, the ring, uh, put your pump up on some blocks you use a screw, long screwdriver and start getting at it down there with a um, with the edge and knock it loose. So as you can see, I've made some progress. You can see it's moving. I don't know if this is necessarily faster, but if you don't have the impeller tool to remove the impeller, And this is an option for you. And as you can see, it's coming out. It, it, it's moving. Getting it started. Getting that grip. And get to that lip, get to that edge. I just don't know if this is really faster than normally. I can have it cut out in about 10 15 minutes with the Dremel tool. It's really wedged it in, into the plastic. Yeah, we're making some progress. Look at that. 
We're making progress. Need a longer screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. That's what I need. You had four screwdrivers, that'd be great. I think we're just about out. Getting the screwdriver out of that plastic is going to be. Wedged in the entire. Yep. Okay, I gotta get back again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you're doing that, make sure you. There we go. What happened was my. The blade was in a certain position where it was wedging between the wear ring as it was going down and the impeller blade. So be careful when you do that. I'm hoping you guys can see this at least somewhat. Don't want that to happen again. I'll just spin that blade. Spin the color blade. There we go. At least with this way you don't have to worry about all the debris and from filings from from uh, cutting out with a Dremel tool. Let me position my Rear ring is just about all the way out. And now we can get on that edge more. It's got to be almost out. Yeah, this is where a longer screwdriver would come in handy. I think we're just about out. I can see the light. wedged again. There we go. Yeah, you really need a longer screwdriver. And watch those impeller blades. There we go. There, look at that. Didn't have to cut it out. Didn't have to cut it out. That is freaking awesome. You can see here where I had to start. Hopefully you guys, hopefully I'm getting that at the edge until you get this exposed. Once you get that flat piece exposed, you can use it to be down. But you can see here where my screwdriver was digging in. That's why I was just stuck in and it was just getting stuck between there and the blade as it went down. So that is all done. So we'll drain the oil out, put fresh oil in there, pop in our new wear ring, and we'll be golden. Okay, so I paused the video. I cleaned the outside or the, around the where the wear ring goes. We're gonna lay a lay a 
bead of silicone around this flat edge. I use this DAP Auto Marine silicone. Just like that. So just like that. So we got that. Use my paper towel. And that goes in flat side down. Just like that. I'm gonna try to get her straight. normally do this in my bench vise. Get her started like that, and I'll grab my 2x4. We put our 2x4 across, just like that. Make sure we're solid, whatever I need to. Cone is hidden. Okay, so I need to get this up a little bit. Okay, let me pause this video. Okay, so I had to add some height to it because my cone was hitting the ground. Hopefully, these two by fours underneath here will give us the lift we need. I do this with the impeller off. There we go. She's a beaut. Now you can see the gap is. A lot better. A group of motorcycles going by. Okay, so everything else is just in reverse. We'll drain the oil, top it off with oil. Since we didn't remove the cone, I'm just going to drain the oil out the best I can. I, don't know, I might take it off, but... Um, Otherwise, we'll do a pressure test on that, and we'll be golden. Everything else put back together is the exact opposite way. We'll put the carrier bearing in. And let's see, I'll grab that. Let's see. Here we go. So, carrier bearing is really simple, guys. Yeah, this is from OSD Marine. We'll use our clamps. Push this in there. Put your clamps on, and then your shaft just drops, slides right through there. No, uh, no retainer clip, no O-ring to worry about. So it's that simple. Um, <laughs> it's, it's your shaft will just go straight through there without any problem. Pump some grease in there. That's the issue. A lot of people forget to grease them, or they over grease them and blow out the bearing. Um, so, so basically, that's just replacing all that. So it's pretty simple, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, comment. And uh, see you guys on the water. Peace out.